Hello, my name is Michael O'Callaghan. I'm one of the four authors involved in the new EDCO science book for the junior cycle, Exploring Science. The junior, new junior cert course has a new kind of philosophy behind it. It's based on learning by inquiry, where the teacher doesn't drive the agenda anymore. It's more the student asking questions and the teacher answering. And by questions and answers, progress is made. The new course has quite a lot of jargon, as one would expect, a lot of philosophical jargon that's overlaid on it. All this jargon is explained, particularly in the teacher's book. Uh, the new course has four subject areas, biology or the biological world, physics or the world of physics, the physics world, chemistry or the world of, chemi of chemicals, and then earth and space, a new section, earth and space. Now, those four subject areas are overlaid or as an umbrella group by the nature of science, and the nature of science must link into each of those four chapter areas. In writing the book, we were very conscious that the nature of science was a new concept to, to people, and therefore in every chapter in the textbook we have symbols, red symbols, and they have C1 and U9 and S9 and that type of thing. These symbols uh, reflect the nature of science. They're to explain to the teachers what the nature of science is about and how it links into that particular chapter. And that would be in all the chapters, they're red symbols. And they're fully explained in the preamble to the book at the beginning and in the teacher's book, etc. Um, in, in each uh, chapter, at the start of each chapter, we would use a, a whole bank of keywords. These are the technical words that would be involved in that particular chapter. With the new philosophy that's in the course, two driving elements of that would be literacy and numeracy, that the new course is very driven by the literacy, concept of literacy and numeracy. And to promote literacy particularly, we've used those key words where the students have to pick them out, etc., and write, essay, uh, write little sentences about them later on. We've also put in the headings within the chapters, and the headings go in as questions. Rather than saying, you know, the path of food is, or what happens to food, we put in questions. What happens to food? Where does food go? And lots of the headings are to kind of stimulate the idea of questions, and then we give the answers to the questions as such. The textbook has numerous questions within it. In the old books, the questions would always be at the end of, the, of each chapter. Um, in, this, in the new style, the questions are interspersed within the chapter. This was strongly driven home to us because one of our teachers is very much involved as, on a pilot project um, for the last three years with the, with the uh, new junior cycle of science course. And various inspectors have come in and said that, if, that they, do, they would much prefer that questions were in the book rather than having at the end, that having questions banked at the end of the, te of the chapter is kind of against the ethos of the course. It's not what they're looking for. So that's why we've put the questions interspersed within the, the, the chapters. It's new. It's a different way of doing it. it. It comes to the same point. There's plenty of questions there, but they're in the chapters rather than at the end. The student portfolio book um, starts off also with keywords, where the students have to write a sentence using each keyword, again, to get them to be literate, to make sure they understand the word and that they can use it and put it into context within a sentence. Um, within the student book, there are many, many questions, extra questions. Now, these are there to establish the fact that the students can understand the keywords, that they understand the meaning of those key facts and the essence of what was in the actual chapter. The textbook and the student book have uh, many activities. Again, the activities in the course are not specified. There's no activity that's compulsory. Um, some of the activities are very, very simple ones. Some of the activities are more complicated ones as they would have been in the old junior cycle course. But it's up to each teacher to judge them. And if teachers find the experiments or the activities are, are too difficult, well, they can leave them out or they can put one in. In general, there has to be at least one activity uh, for each learning outcome, for each, for each, basically for each chapter. So we have numerous activities there, but they don't all have to be completed. The students can write up the activities in the student portfolio book. Again, they want to get away from this idea that teachers would just write up the aims and the methods and the equipment used, etc. Students found that very boring. So it's more, the, the, the activity is to be written up in a slightly different format by answering questions and filling in one or two liners here and there. It's, it's the new style again. <coughs> Um, in the teacher's resource book, it's kind of the overall, it, it brings everything together. It explains all the jargon and it ties in all the jargon, a, a line to each chapter. It tells you what page it's on, where it's being used, etc. It also has all the answers. The answers to every question in the textbook or in the student book, every single question is answered and some of them are answered extensively. The, might, the student might be asked to write a, a little potted biography of a particular scientist. Well, that's included there. Not that the student would be expected to give all that information, that information is there so the teacher has it. And all the questions are answered in, in the uh, teacher's resource book. In particular, in, in the student portfolio book, we've got mind maps. Some students learn very well, very clearly from mind maps. Now, initially, the mind maps are filled in in the first numbers of chapters. And then as you go into the different chapters, 
the mind maps are more and more gaps are left with the mind maps we've left more spaces but again all the mind maps are completed in the teacher's resource book as the inspectors have been coming around inspecting schools They've been asking some of the pilot school teachers, like, how did you bring in statements of learning into your class today? How did you bring in, you know, literacy and numeracy? All of that kind of information is, is written down. It's given in the teacher's resource book, chapter by chapter by chapter. In the resource book, there's also extra material. If, if the teacher wanted extra activities, if they had a very good class or maybe a slower class, they could use a, a different activity to what's in the textbook. They're given in the, teach, in the teacher's resource book. Also given in the teacher's resource book are a list of the digital equipment. EDCO has a huge bank of digital on EDCO Learning. There's a huge bank of materials, some fantastic videos, short 30 second videos. Great ones to catch the attention of, you know, heart beating and blood flowing through blood vessels and, and that type of thing. And all of those are listed in the teacher's resource book. It also gives us a series of websites for, teach, for students who might want to go on and do a project on one aspect or another. Those kind of websites are there for the teacher to give out. Um, and there's also a list then of famous scientists. Again, part of the course philosophy is that the students should link a famous scientist or famous scientists with that particular chapter. We've one or two of, the cha of those scientists mentioned throughout the, the, the textbook, but on the teacher's book at the end, there's another list of four or five more in case students want to go home and work in groups. We've lots of symbols built in because the symbols are showing research, group work, that type of thing. All the activities in the textbook have a logo on them to tell you what page in the student portfolio book they're on so that you don't have to go looking through and rifling through the pages, etc. And effectively, between the textbook, the student portfolio book, and particularly the teacher's resource book, it's a kind of an integrated package where it ticks all the boxes. And as a couple of people said to me that the teacher's resource book really is, is a, it's a kind of a safety blanket, it's a comfort blanket for teachers that if the inspector comes in and asks, how did you handle literacy? How did you handle numeracy? How did you handle whatever it might have been? All that information is there, all that jargon is there from the philosophical overview of the course is in on the teacher's resource book.